Hey, pop-up trailer fans, time for another DIY pop-up maintenance project. In this video, I'm going to take you through the steps of replacing an awning bag. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. This is a 2005 StarCraft pop-up trailer. I've owned it for about 15 years. I'm the second owner. And um, things are looking pretty bad with the awning bag. This is one of those standard awning bags that um, you unzip it, you pull the awning down, it's got some poles that stand up, it can brace against the trailer, and the awning is in good shape. However, the bag, as you can see, uh, has seen better days. Uh, this is falling apart, the material is falling off as we speak. That's the front of the bag, the back of the bag is even worse. The outer material is just disintegrated. The zipper pole was the first to go, which is kind of fell off so the bag wouldn't even close. I managed to limp along a little bit by applying some grommets and some string but it's time for something else. This bag is seeing better days and it need, I need a new bag. The first thing we need to do is remove the bag from the trailer so we can work on it. Uh, pretty easy. We've got this uh, this Ketter flap here and a Ketter rail and the flap just slides into the rail and it's held on by a screw in the back and a screw in the front. Take the screws out and just pull the thing out. Easy peasy. Before I begin this project, let's ask the obvious question. Why am I doing this? Why don't I just get on the internet and buy a new awning and bag? Turns out it's not so easy. Um, these bags are custom made with these awnings. They're sewed together, so you have to buy it as a unit. And they run anywhere from like $350 to $500, depending on how wide, how long, etc., etc. As far as the bag goes, I did find one place that will make the bag, but it was pretty expensive too. So when I started looking into this, I thought, well, how much does it actually cost to do this? I do have a sewing machine. I know how to sew in a straight line, which is pretty much all I need to be able to do. So how much does this cost? Let's take a look. After doing a little research, here's the answer. All the parts, not labor of course, come to $164.13, which is a lot cheaper than it would cost to buy one of these things. The first thing I needed to buy was the materials. This is some kind of coated polyester, it looks like. It's the same material my awning's made out of. And I really couldn't find any place in the U.S. that sold this. Found a place in Canada, but they only shipped to Canada, so that wasn't super helpful. I did find a, a company called uh, Seattle Fabrics that sold a duck material. It's, it's a Sunforger boat shrunk cotton duck. It's the same material they use on like boat covers and, and awnings for, I guess, houses and, and cushions for marine work. So that seems to me it's, it's mildew resistant. It's, uh, you know, it's fairly water resistant. I don't know how waterproof it is, but it should hopefully hold up. So I got that. And then I got some, some uh, strong threads to go with that. Um, that is a polyester thread. And then I got some seam sealer because we're going to need that later. That came to $80. And honestly, the parts were only $64. The shipping was $16, which was a bummer, but I didn't have any choice. Next item is the zipper, 20 bucks at Amazon. Comes in a little roll like this. And here's the actual um, description of the item you're gonna wanna get if you're doing this. All right, here's the actual uh, Ketter um, awning rope. Uh, Ketter, I guess, refers to the fact that there's like this PVC core and then there's a fabric, a waterproof fabric on the outside meant for like sails and awnings. I got this at sale right. It's a 5 16th white Ketter awning rope. Um, make sure you measure your rail because if you get it wrong, you can't take it back. At this uh, cost about $19.50, here's the sales thing and then there's shipping and handling which brings it up to $31.60. And then lastly, I just picked up some items from Joanne Fabric. I got some stronger needles so I don't break my needles. This is some uh, double adhesive tape to help stick things in place until I can sew them. Uh, I got some fray check. I don't know if I need that, but I'm afraid that this, uh, this canvas stuff is going to start to unravel a little bit. So I might try to squirt some on there and see if that works. Those are the parts I bought. The only other things I'm gonna need are a seam ripper, which will be used to pull off the uh, material, the old bag. I'm gonna keep the awning, but I have to get that old bag off of there. And I can use that to measure what my new bag should be like and probably a scissors to cut my fabric, maybe pins. And of course, I need a sewing machine. Okay, let's get started. First job, I gotta use my little seam ripper and get the old bag off of my awning. Now my old bag does not use a Ketter awning rope, but rather a double flap Ketter, whatever it's called. There's two flaps and the thing is sandwiched between. I could not find that in the US. When I went to the Ketter homepage, I found those flaps, but they were too big. Again, I need to hit that size. 
and the only thing that was in that size was a single flap. So they assured me it was gonna work. Anyway, see these little stitches right here? I gotta yank those off. If you've never used a seam ripper before, it's pretty basic. This part's sharp, you just shove it in there and snap it. It's a little bit slow in the beginning. Once you get it going, you can usually yank it apart and they start falling apart. You can also try to, I don't need to try to save the bag so I do not have to be gentle. Once I got the old bag off, I laid one of the pieces on top of my fabric and cut two identical new pieces from my duck fabric. Okay, our next step is to get these zipper pulls onto our zipper. Um, when I bought my zipper, it's a, it's a tape and the, the zipper pulls are not on it, so I can cut it to whatever length I want. Now my old awning bag had a double zipper pull, which means I could open it that way I can open it that way. A lot of times the poles are in the middle, so it made it easier. Um, so I need to put these on. To do that, you need to start at one end and open up the teeth. Then take your zipper pull, wide end towards the zippers, wiggle in about halfway on one side, and then wiggle in on the other side. They have to be even. Don't push them all the way in. You're just gonna start about halfway, and then you're gonna start pushing them the rest of the way in. Hold the back and pull. If you're lucky, it'll go right on. If not, keep trying. To complete the double zipper, I go to the other end of the zipper tape and pull those teeth apart and repeat the process. I'll have those zippers meet in the middle later and then I can trim it down to size. When you do get them both on, pull the zippers to meet each other to make sure there's no strange gaps. If there's gapping, you're gonna wanna take off one of the zipper pulls and try again. My next step is to lay my zipper down next to my awning bag and measure it out to the correct length. Okay, now I need to put the zipper stop on so my zipper does not fall off. I wanna make sure that it's gonna be on the same side as my zipper. It doesn't have to be. Full disclosure, I messed this up already and had to cut the end off and start over. I'm gonna do it right this time. Um, I had mine on so that it bumped up against that side. It still worked and I probably should have left it alone, but I want it to look nice. So make sure your zippers are up. Take this little guy, find something you can pound onto, lay it across the track. Now keep in mind, it doesn't have to come all the way to the end like my zipper does, because once my bag is like open to about here, the, the awning will come out. So I can give myself a little bit of wiggle room here. I'm gonna just lay it over the track like that on something that I can pound into. Get the little teeth in there. You can see now that the teeth are sticking through. I think you can see that. The teeth are over the top of the zipper, which is gonna keep it from going, and they're, they're going through. So now I need to just secure this so it doesn't fall off. And the way I'm gonna do that is that I'm going to bend the prongs using a, a pliers, and then I'm gonna pound them flat. Okay. My zipper pulls on. I didn't quite center it, so the prongs aren't super. Take your time with this, I should have. Now you'll notice I got this going on. I've got my candles here. I'm going to just trim those ends off and melt it with the flame. You can use a lighter, I don't have one. Okay, that end is done. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other end. Okay, so I have my zipper that looks like this, and it's got a little bit, some extra teeth on the end as we planned, but just to keep things neat and tidy, I wanna actually cover that up. And the way I can do that, if I'm making a duffel bag, I do the same thing, is I take a little piece of scrap fabric, and I'm gonna lay it over the top of the zipper and sew it across like that. Um, in this case, I am gonna fold it over, if anybody's done any sewing, like this one time, two times, First sew it like that. That's gonna keep it from unraveling. And I'd like to do that with my whole bag, but I didn't cut with enough material to do that. But I can certainly do it here. And then I'm gonna lay it right above where that thing is, and I'm just gonna sew across like that. And that'll give me a little, just to cover up the end of those zipper teeth to make it look a little nicer. Okay, one more thing before I move on. I was gonna use the straps that tie my awning in, but I decided I didn't like them. And it just so happens I had some 5 8 inch 
uh, polypropylene strapping. So I cut three, I measured it's about 30 inches and then just burn the ends so they don't unravel. I'm gonna use that instead just cause I have it. There's no reason I couldn't reuse these. They're not horrible, but I had this stuff, I'm gonna use it. Sewing anything in a curve is super tricky. And I'm also worried that with this duck fabric, it's gonna unravel. So I think I am gonna turn over just a little bit of my edging, flip it over so it's not unraveling on top of all that. That's where this uh, double sticky stuff comes in that I got from the fabric store. It's like a hem tape. It's uh, a little annoying to work with because like anything else, you gotta peel the backing off. Um, so what I've done is I've sort of put it along the curve and now, and now I'm just gonna peel the, the backing off it and I'm gonna turn my edge over on top of that. to create a nice seam. All right, now that I've uh, got the uh, little bit of that hem hanging down, I used my thicker one because I didn't have enough of the little stuff. I just cut it down the middle to make another thin strip to go along this curved edge. The goal is to lay that up against my zipper, give it a little bit of space. You don't want it caught in the teeth. That should help hold it there while I sew it on that curve because sewing things on a curve is always tricky. While I was sewing the zipper onto the fabric, I did turn under a little hem of the straight edge. Remember when I had done the curving edge, I'd use the sticky tape. I didn't use the sticky tape on the long end because it was actually pretty easy to just do it as I went, just a little bit to keep it from unraveling. Okay, I got it on the curve there. Looks pretty good. And I have the little end stopping thing here too. So that's gonna look nice. All right. It's time to uh, lay out the uh, other side using the sticky tape on the curves and let's do the other side now. One thing that's going to make this job a lot easier is once I get the, uh, the zipper started, you know, I've got the shape here. I'm going to open the zipper up and that's going to allow this to lay flat again. Okay, I'm going to trim this to the edge. It's getting ready to yeah, finish that up. That one's already done. I'll trim off any strings. I don't want those being caught in the zipper. Next, I applied fray check to my edges to keep the edges from unraveling. I don't know if this stuff is gonna work, but I did end up using the whole bottle. Then I sewed my three straps in place so that I didn't have to worry about them moving around when I put the thing together. Next, I put the awning into the bag and I was very happy to see that everything fit. I got my straps all situated and then I sewed the two sides of the bag and the awning together so that they're now one piece. This turned out to be a little bit of a challenge because my sewing machine was no longer in the table. It was raised up above the table. On top of that, I didn't have any way to hold all this stuff together. I ended up using some clamps and some vices. I know that there are sewing clamps you can buy, but I didn't own any. I made it work. The final step was to apply the Ketter awning rope to the bag. This turned out to be the most difficult part of the job. If I were to do this in the future, I would leave my sewing machine in the table because my sewing machine kept moving around while I tried to maneuver this big bag underneath the foot. Plus, the thread kept breaking. I ended up using a regular thread versus the special thread to put the Ketter awning rope on because the other thread just kept breaking. Here's a close-up of the final product. You can see that where the stitches were not going well on the uh, old thread, they got all bunched up, what's called bird nesting. Then I ended up switching over to the other thread and that seemed to eliminate that problem. I did end up applying a seam sealer to all of this to hopefully just keep it in place and keep water out of the bag. Finally, the job is done. Time to roll up the awning, tie it up, get it into the bag, zip it shut, and put it back out on the trailer. Don't forget to put the two screws in to keep the awning bag from sliding onto the rail. 
And there you have it. After a weekend's worth of work and $165 worth of parts, I have a brand new awning bag.